dad used to love avocados love maize so i could go close to those plants and i will talk i will say i know you love this you can hear me yeah I would grieve and grieve and grieve. But and then grieve. I was like, did I miss something that could help me? Because the pain was too much. That's an amazing viewer. I'm glad you're here. Comfort for life. Thank you for coming back. It's been a while. Yes, it's been a while. Uh, you'll get to know the reason. But I don't think in this video. And if you're new here, this is Comfort for Life. Uh, where we talk about life experiences, especially things that we learn from life. Uh, on a daily basis and why not inspirational stories beside that i'm a student at african international university and i love writing i love writing i'm live writing i love writing and especially more especially poems and i am a singer i'm a singer i wrote. expect more to come on this channel thank you for tuning in and i want to tell you that this is the place to be in today's topic i'll be talking about dealing with loss grief all those things that come with loss how do we deal with them i know this is a very hard topic considering the facts that it affects each one of us differently and so um it will be a bit hard but what i will be explaining to you what i'll be talking about is my experience and later on i will be i will narrate to you my story about loss and then after that i will get to give you some few lessons uh, that I learned and some few things that had helped me through the journey. Disclaimer. I am not a counselor. In case you're experiencing stuff that you are really dealing with, uh, they're hard for you to deal with, consider visiting a counselor so that you can uh, get uh, medical attention concerning that. Wow. So having thought that death was very far away from me, coming from a country of war where every day there were reports of people dying in different places uh drc and you know it's all over the news where people die too much is congo where people like drc is known for that it's known for like losses losses and losses so every day i would hear like there's a family that has lost their loved ones there's a family that has been attacked it's either through war through so many things there are so many reasons that were making people suffer loss in the rc and having seen all those kind of stuff and having witnesses witnessed all those kind of stuff i knew that death was very far away from me since i had mentioned in my previous videos that i come from a family of 12 children and we were a privilege to all being brought up alive and up to this time as i'm talking to you we are 12 children in number so i never knew that death could ever strike somebody i know somebody's close to me until when i was surprised uh, that it striked somebody i had in my life who was so precious to me that's when the first day that loss came closer it came into my life so that was the time i lost my dad and when i lost my dad it was very hard i had to travel to my country it was a very fast visit and i thank god that people came through and uh, we had to fly as fast as we could uh, to the rc with the entire family so as we had gone to congo since it was also a period where I was still battling with like trying to come out of depression, it was the, the time that I was finding my way out of depression. So the loss of my dad had taken me miles back. You get miles back. So I, it made even the process much more harder for me. So I, I realized that I had gone so far in my recovery um, uh, process. But when I lost him, uh, things really began to scramble a little bit and it's it's impeded some of the things that i had already worked on and some kind of resilience that i had already built so uh, because now i was like it's so hopeless and all the plans i have and there's also an open letter so that even before i got to post that open letter i had to talk about it so that you at least understand what i'd gone through so I had traveled to Congo since now uh, when I just reached Congo it's when I realized yeah it might be real but in my head I knew my dad was somewhere so when I was told he was already buried because uh, 
because of how I was at that time, they felt that it was wiser for me not to go at the place of burial, so I didn't see how he was buried. So uh, at that time, yeah, I never liked it, but there was that was the best way to deal with it at that time because I, I knew nothing about, you know, I, I, I was just in my own world, if I might, yeah, if I may, yeah, I was just in my own world where I was thinking he will come back and I remember having made a lot of noise telling people I want to see my dad while he was already gone. So things went worse that I had to come back to Kenya because I was under medication and I was seeing a doctor in this country. So I had to come to Kenya and when I reached Kenya, it's when now I started the mourning. It's when I realized he's gone. It's when I knew he's gone completely. So I started now mourning on my own. You get there's a way you grieve, you grieve, you grieve until you feel like, no, I can't take this anymore. So I remember the time that I could leave everyone and just lock myself somewhere, go and hide. I will cry, I will cry, and sometimes I will just talk as I cry. I remember having recorded a video like, I don't know, I had taken somebody's tablet and recorded like something that was 30 minutes. I was just talking and trying to talk to my dad. Um, and everything that I was seeing that he likes could always make me think that if i go close maybe to a let me say because the thing that I had talked close to was a an avocado plant so i had gone there because my dad used to love avocados love maize so i could go close to those plants and i will talk i will say i know you love this you can hear me i would grieve and grieve and grieve until it was like i don't know but then I was like, did I miss something that could help me? Because the pain was too much that nobody could understand. I don't know. It's only God who understands. And if you are grieving right now and you see people around you are not understanding or you think they are not sympathizing with you, it's because they don't know how you're feeling. They don't get... Yeah, sometimes people don't understand how, how grief is like, how people feel when they lose someone they don't unless they're in that situation you get so uh hang in there hang in there and yeah, let me let me tell you how i went about this so i started doing research and i was like why do people pay tribute so i started doing research trying to understand and then i was like yeah in in laws there are process you know there are processes that people go through after you lose someone there's that funeral there's also paying tribute you have to speak to the dead you have to go kiss maybe like you just go and finish everything so i realized that there are so many things that were undone there are things that i didn't get to see that really troubled me i i kept on knowing that he's alive he's there he's so because i didn't go through all those kind of stuff and they, they felt that the best way was for me not to see anything yeah which was which led me to even grieve even more yeah in that period so uh it was hard it was a very hard time but meanwhile i i grieved i grieved and at some point i was saying should i organize something like a service or just tell people to like things were running into my head and i was like if i try to tell somebody about this will they understand me will they get what i'm thinking i feel like i need enough time to mourn my dad i need time i need time don't cry this is a past story anyway don't cry don't cry i feel the sadness i see the sadness on your face but don't cry so it was it was that way and then i was like it's so hard i don't know how to do it um so it took me time and crying is okay crying is okay is okay crying is okay crying is fine if sometimes things goes bad and you have to cry you feel like you have a lot of pain though sometimes people will tell you that uh, we do not cry especially believers are the ones who say we do not mourn as the world does we are children of god and all those kind of stuff but i'm telling you when it comes to loss <laughs> it's hard 
you know the our mourning is 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 real we we mourn because we are human beings but when the, the bible says that you don't mind mourn as the world dies it's because uh we, we we know what happens after death and we have assurance we have the guarantee of eternal life after death so we believe in life after death and there's a better life out there that's why we we mourn knowing that we have uh, a god we have somebody who who is watching us crying and who, is, who has promised us eternal life that's why we don't mourn as them but it doesn't exclude the fact that we are all human beings we feel pain we are troubled all of us so when you go through pain and you feel like crying take that time cry if you have to stop what you're doing or all that uh you you, you cry if it's work take a time off cry make sure you mount the person who has passed on because it's it's important for you until you get to understand and i thank god this is where now i will uh have to bring the people who are praying for us because my husband very supportive he was praying for me he because he couldn't understand what was happening as well like i don't know he might have understood that's why he got the courage to pray so he was praying and people prayed with us so until i started regaining strength so our strength comes from the hope that we have Ah, uh, that's where her strength comes from. So, this is just the first loss that I had experienced. I had also experienced another loss that is so uh, recent in my life, and I'll talk about it in the next video and how I overcame and how I, um, I'm I'm getting out of that because it has really struck me off so many things, and I was trying to get myself back together, as I told you. I can't come to you looking stressed, depressed, all those kind of stuff you get. So I, 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 yeah, that's why I had taken some time off to try and put myself back together so that I know that even when I talk, I'm speaking out of a heart that is full, a heart that is convinced of what I'm saying. You get because there's no way i can come here talk to you about how to overcome depression and i'm depressed <laughs> anyway i can't come here tell you how to overcome grief and i'm grieving because i will end up crying i had tried severally to talk about my stories uh to people but um when I was still under depression, I couldn't express it. Every time when I could talk about it, I would just cry, shed tears. I would not even finish a sentence. But now I can boldly speak about it and help people and help you and help anyone who is also under the same. So tune in, second part. Make sure you don't miss it. Remember to subscribe. Click that subscribe button and let's grow this community and share the video. Help a friend. I love you.